Here's a new acquisition on the bench. This is a General Radio 1803A AC vacuum tube voltmeter. This was one of the first offerings from General Radio after World War II. It's an interesting unit. This, uh, this particular instrument is very clean. Uh, I don't know if it works. Uh, we'll, we'll find that out as we go through the video. It measures 0 to 150 volts AC in five scales. And one of the interesting things about this unit is that it can measure AC that has frequency up to about 120 megahertz. It does this through an active probe that includes inside the probe a vacuum tube diode. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to open the unit up and check it out, check the resistors and capacitors, make any replacements that need to be made. We'll test the tubes and examine the cords and make any necessary repairs there. And then we'll test the unit out and see if we can bring it into calibration. Here's the inside of the chassis. And you can see that this is very well laid out. There are two tubes. The one on the right is a 6X5, which happens to be a full wave rectifier. And on the left is a 6SU7, which is a dual triode. We have our two electrolytic capacitors. We have our range switch here with the wire wound resistors. The transformer doesn't have any obvious burn marks or scorch marks on it. And I don't see any mold growing or fungus. Uh, the unit doesn't smell. It's very clean inside. There isn't even any dust. So I'm very pleased seeing this. Uh, it's very well laid out, clearly well engineered. And we'll look at the bottom next. Here's the underside of the chassis. Almost all of the parts are installed on what amounts to be a long terminal strip, or maybe you could say two parallel terminal strips. There's a mica capacitor. There are three wire wound resistors and several carbon composition resistors. We will have to take those out and check them and make sure that they are within tolerance. Almost certainly they will not be. Carbon resistors tend to drift as they age. And there are two line fuses, which look to be the same. They are likely to be the originals. The line cord here has got a break in it. It appears to be just the outer insulation. There's an outer layer of rubber insulation and then an inner layer of cloth. So we'll have to address that. And that looks to be just about it. Here are our two electrolytic capacitors. They are single capacitors each. And our tube sockets uh, look very well. I don't see any obvious signs of resoldering. I think that this is completely original and uh, untouched for a very long time. And lastly, here's our active probe with the shroud taken off. We have our uh, labeled 6AL5 tube, which is a dual diode, mica capacitor, and on the back side are three resistors, two of which are carbon composition. The cord is in very good shape through here. Uh, no problems with that. So we'll just have to check the resistors and maybe reflow some of the solder connections, and that should be good to go. All right, we're just beginning to check the resistors on the underside of the chassis. And um, here's an example of a carbon composition resistor. Given the color code, that works out to be 15 mega ohms. This resistor should read 15 mega ohms. And the tolerance on this resistor, the silver band, means that it should read within 10% tolerance. This means that um, if the resistor is less than 16 and a half mega ohms, then it's within tolerance. I've measured this resistor on an LCR meter, and it is in fact within tolerance. I will probably go ahead and replace this resistor uh, once I get a replacement for reasons that I'll show in just a moment. This is the measurement of one of two like value carbon composition resistors in the active probe. The color code on those resistors 
translates to 47 megohms each with, again, a 10% tolerance. 10% tolerance for these resistors works out to be 51.7 megohms. You can see that this resistor is measuring closer to 54 megohms, so this resistor is out of tolerance and needs to be replaced. The, uh, the second resistor is similarly out of tolerance, in fact, more so. So those will be replaced as well. And what I'm going to do is actually replace all of the carbon composition resistors in this instrument uh, because there aren't that many of them and I can get the values from uh, online vendors. While we're on the active probe, I went ahead and decided to check the mica capacitor. Mica capacitors are usually thought to be very stable and rarely need changed. At least that's what they tell you in the books. So I decided to go ahead and measure this, and the color coding on the mica capacitor uh, turned out to be 9.2 nanofarad. And when it's measured on my LCR meter, in fact, you see it turns out to be 9.3 nanofarad. This capacitor is uh, certainly within tolerance, and there's no need to replace it. Next, I've removed one of the two electrolytic capacitors, uh, the one that was right here, and um, I've shown it here in the hobby vise. And you can see that the value is 20 microfarads rated at 450 volts DC. So we'll just see how that measures up, how well it's aged. The value measured in a multimeter is 27 microfarads. So it's a little high for its stated rating, but probably no problem. But the issue with these old electrolytics isn't so much the change of value, but rather whether or not they leak. So I'm going to do a leakage test right now with an old capacitor leak tester. So put the leads on here making sure that we don't have the polarity reversed. And here's the way that we're going to test it with an old Heath kit capacitor leakage tester. So the magic eye right now is open. And uh, this weighs in at somewhere right around 20 microfarad. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put it on leakage test. And right now it's at 3 volts. We're going to go up to 6, 30, 15. The eye is still open, so this is a good sign. 25, 50. And you see it's barely opening up, opening up very, very slowly, even at 50 volts. So let's go up to 40, I'm sorry, to 100 volts. And the eye is you know, squinting. It's really not opening up very much. And at 150 volts, even less. And at 200 volts, similar. 250, 300. And I'm not going to go bother to go up any, any higher. This makes the point that this is a very leaky electrolytic capacitor. Uh, luckily, I have a replacement and so we'll go about checking the other electrolytic as well, but I'm skeptical that it will not leak when tested. So we'll go ahead and replace both of those. I've made the repairs to the General Radio 1803A. I've uh, replaced two electrolytic capacitors and several resistors. I still need to address the power on lamp, which doesn't seem to be functioning and replace a resistor in series with it. But I decided to go ahead and turn the meter on and see how we're doing. And I was very pleasantly surprised with the results. So here it is with a 60 hertz signal a sine wave. And you can see on the modern meter, I'm measuring just shy of 6 tenths of a volt. And on the general radio meter, on the uh, one and a half volt scale, you can see right here that I'm just at 0.6 volts. If I decrease that down to 0.3, 
there we are. I can go up to 0.8. And there we are. And I can do this across scales. If I change this to the 5 volt scale now, bring it up to 1 volt. There we are. And 2 volts. 2.5. And, and then something bad happens. If I continue going further, the meter sticks. So, uh, there's a mechanical issue there. The uh, stock meter. And it's independent of scale, sadly. It will eventually come back. There, there we go. I will have to take the meter apart and oftentimes there's you know, a metallic shard or a piece of dust or dirt that's fallen down in the movement and I'll do that, I'll do that next. But I figured that this was a, a good time to stop and take stock of how we're doing and I'm very pleased with the results. All right, I took the meter out of the case. I, I disassembled this part from the rest of the chassis uh, and opened it up and looked uh, looked around and what I found was pretty appalling. Uh, I had hoped that the meter assembly, you know, this part of the meter assembly was sealed, but it turned out that it, it really wasn't. And as a result, I found 65 plus years of dust and very fine particle oxides and just general crud uh, in the meter compartment. So I was able to very gently and carefully uh, blow it out and clean it up as best I could while not disturbing the intact uh, hinges and you know, rest points of, of the meter itself. And it looks like I was fairly successful at doing that. Um, so here we are again back with our 60 hertz signal on the one and a half volt scale. And look at just how nicely it goes up and down. It doesn't stick there around the 0.9 volt level anymore. And I have not made any attempt to calibrate this. And just look at how well the meter 65 years past production point agrees with uh, a new DMM. That is just amazing. I find that amazing anyway. Uh, so let's look at, let's set it to a volt. So there's a volt and we're going to go from the one and a half volt scale to the five volt scale and look at that. One volt on the nose. Uh, and if we go up to the 15 volt scale now, here we are on that scale. We're a little off on that scale, uh, but go to the 50 volt scale. So that would be the scale right here. And you know, you're down, you're down around one. So, you know, clearly I have to go through and calibrate this and uh, make it accurate. And I'm not sure how to do that because there is no manual for the Model A, uh, the 1803A meter on the internet that I can find. So maybe that'll be part two of the video when we look at calibration and the frequency response of this. So this is just a real gem. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and stay tuned for part two to come at some point in the future. And thank you very much for watching.